Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. To Hello Self Podcast. I'm Patricia Leonard and I'm your podcast host. You may be asking yourself, what is Hello Self? Well, I call it a wake up call for what we want to do with our life. So our mission is to get you to take those goals and dreams off that someday shelf and start putting a plan together or making a step forward. As Nemo would say, keep swimming. So so move forward in coming together on some kind of approach or some kind of plan for taking those cans away and bringing them into cans. I have a fabulous guest today, and she's going to give you so much data. You may be asking yourself, how do I move forward? How do I take that step? Well, I'll tell you, she is the master of breaking through that. She's had many hello self moments and not only just nudges, she has created something out of it and made a very interesting career and life for herself. She was in a hello self moment when Donna and I first met. The company that she was part of was downsizing. And I happened to be working with the organization that their company had hired to help those transition into other forms of work or to other companies. And I was Donna's coach. It has been a life (laughs) journey that we have followed each other since then. But you know what? I'm going to jump out of here now and let Donna give you the overview of her life and career story. Because one more thing I wanna say about what I believe about stories. In every story, there are many gifts and lots of glorious knowledge, seeking knowledge, or for those seeking knowledge, there's a lot of gifts in that because her story is part of everybody else's story. So here we go, Donna, tell us about yourself. (laughs) Thank you so much for being here. Yes, of course. Of course. You know, a little bit about me being in business for 30 plus years, there's ebbs and flows and ups and downs. And as Mm -hmm. Patricia mentioned, I was part of a downsizing several years ago and had to decide what am I going to do? And Mm -hmm. in that hello self moment, I decided to leverage my expertise and become a consultant and that was new to me. It was kind of new back then. She also, started her own business thing. Yeah. yeah. So I started my own business leveraging my expertise. And my expertise happens to be in customer experience. And yeah. so I helped clients design and deliver customer feedback surveys, trained people on customer service, how to handle complaints, all of the things that I was doing for a corporation, I then started to do for clients as part of my own business. And that was very liberating. It was very liberating to have people pay for your knowledge, (laughs) right? Along the way, you learn all of these things and are excelling in your career and you don't actually realize all of the knowledge and expertise that you have. Um, So I got to do that. And then I also was able to network. And here's why that's important. You know, we're really busy in our full-time jobs. We know our colleagues, but very rarely do we get the opportunity to meet others in our industry, so true. people in different industries, or even people in your community. And so when that downsizing happened and I didn't have the demands of a corporate job and I was building my own consulting company, I had the time to go to meet and greets and, and networking events and coffees. And I'm grateful for that because I built a very robust network, many of whom I am still in contact with today. Kind of like you, you know, we could have called it quits after you were my, you know, career counselor, but we didn't because there was something there and we had networked and we built a deeper relationship. And so sometimes I don't think that in our career and life journey, we value those kind of moments that you're just talking about the networks that we build. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I look back on that time fondly and encourage new leaders and new women in business to do the same. Like you might say, I'm no good at networking. It doesn't matter. Go anyway. Yeah. Figure out how to get good at networking. Like you don't have to meet everybody. Just talk to one or two people and then, you know, expand the relationship from there. So I was very grateful for that. And that was kind of my first hello self yes. moment, but I've had a few others along the way too. Mm -hmm. So sometimes our hello self moments are created from an outside impact, just yeah. like a company downsizing. And some of them are our own uh, because it caused you to have your own hello self moment at that time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. It did. Shall I share the others? <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> so had my own business for, for several years and was lucky enough to then get hired on by a few clients. Um, mm -hmm. My second hello self moment came maybe two years ago, actually, a little, little over two years ago. It was kind of during COVID. And this was a self-imposed hello self moment. Bravo. And it, it, it went like this. I joined a company that's very popular. I'm not going to say who it was, but you would certainly know who it was. Right. I was so excited about the potential of the role that I had landed. And very quickly after getting there, I realized that my idea of the role probably wasn't going to be the reality of the role. But I tried because guess what? I'm not a quitter. And this was a role in my area of expertise. So I had done this before, but something just wasn't making sense. And I, I wasn't happy. It was visible to my friend group because many of them would tap me or call me and be like, hey, Donna, you know, what are you going to do? I don't, something's not right here. And so one night, just at home after another tough day, I did something. And I say this phrase all the time because it was impactful for me and I hope it's impactful for other people. I gave myself permission to go. And that was a relief, but really hard for me to get to that point. But once I said, self-talk, yeah. Donna, it'll be okay. Bet on yourself. You can do this. If it's really not working, you can go. There was just a relief. Like the, the pressure was off. Yeah. I lasted there about another eight weeks before I did resign from that role. But that hello self of you, you know, when it's not the right fit, you know, when it's not for you, you know, when you're not bringing your best self or doing your best work, it's okay to give yourself permission to go. Sure. It's okay to bet on yourself. You like as individuals, we're capable of so much and have so much experience and knowledge. We barely even tap into all of it. And so once I gave myself permission to go and, and left, I had that downtime and my creativity bubbled up. And then I did something else that was just simply wonderful. And that something else was, I wrote two children's books about my senior dog. Her name is Lady. She's 13. And I self-published. Again, kind of betting on myself, giving myself credit to be able to do something that was a little out of my comfort zone, but do it for, for myself. So I'm self-published on Amazon two children's books called Things Lady Likes, and they're out there for the universe whenever. What do you think was to. the main driver of you deciding to go in the direction of self-publishing? I know you had mm -hmm. uh, left your position, mm -hmm. but, but that was something a little different for you. So what I, do you mm -hmm. think some of the key drivers or driver was in making yeah. that shift? I think... That's a really good question. And my honest, like raw answer without overanalyzing it yes. is I could be in control. Ah. And in that role that I left, I didn't feel like I was in control. Uh -huh. Even though it was a leadership position, I wasn't allowed to lead. We're not going to get you know any further into that. And so I think it was because I was in control. Uh -huh. I could create this how I wanted to get it out to the universe, you know, how I wanted to. And I think that was the driver. I just wanted something that was mine, something that, you know, I did so that I could get this feeling of accomplishment because, 
you know, in that other role, I just, I'm going to say it. I felt like I failed in that role Mm -hmm. and it was just an uncomfortable feeling. Yes. That is a key statement, Donna, that you just made about gaining control because I feel like in my coaching, I found that so many people feel out of control Mm. and they feel like they're in prison or locked into something that they can't get out of. And sometimes, and you said it so well, it's a conversation with self about Mm. permission. I love that. I think so many people are afraid to do that, but once they do it, you said, I felt like I had released myself and yes. It was, it was okay. And like, that doesn't mean that it wasn't scary at times. No, that doesn't mean that I was like, okay, now what, but here's the other thing that I think is unique about working in general. Now there's this gig economy, right? There's food delivery, grocery delivery that, you know, those things you can do in the meantime, if you wanted to, I uh, signed up for a program called Upwork where other professionals or people looking for part-time roles, you build an account and a profile and you can get gigs. And I was fortunate enough to get short-term gigs on building training materials for customer experience. I've done that all of my career and I could do it temporarily and make some money in that kind of down spot where I had left. I was creating this book, these books, who knows what's going to happen, but you know, still needed an income. I started calling old clients hey, I'm available, let's talk again, right? Leveraging that network that I talked about that I had Mm -hmm. developed over time. Hey, I'm available. Who can you connect me with? Let's meet up for coffee again. Well, let's meet up on Zoom again, (laughs) right? Because we were still- Save my money, let's meet again besides COVID was there. (laughs) Yeah, because we still weren't really out and about, but I was surprised how many non-traditional opportunities there were to still make money and still do good work Etc. And so that that carried me over uh, to my next consulting job, and then ultimately, you know, my full time job that I've been at for three months now. And that's all because I bet on myself. And you I know what? Mean. You you said something else I think is very important. You reached out to your network. Yeah. So many times, people feel like, well, first of all, I had a client the other day said, "I'm not a networker." We don't have, we, we take networking in a wrong perspective. We mm-hmm. think it's getting out there and doing it. It, it can be like hustling. It's not, it's not hustling somebody yeah. in a grocery store. I can't believe I yeah. got a client at a grocery store one day, just talking. Yes. We started out talking about what aisle is so-and-so on. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the person said, I like you. Are you from <laughs> Hendersonville? That's where I live now. And I said, yes, I am. Do you go to Planet Fitness? I said, yes, I do. And all of a sudden, we had all these connections. And Mm -hmm. so you're so right, networking. And the whole thing is, I think a lot of times people are afraid to step out. And you said I had to give myself permission. I think, but you said there were a lot of people that came to say, wow, I'll help you. I'll do what. But I think you found your network was supportive. Most people feel... At least the clients that I've had, I'm alone out there when I decide to do this. Yeah. And, you know, it's frightening alone. But you're saying that's not true. It's it's not true if you share your current situation. If you keep it ah. to yourself, then you are alone, right? Ah. But they're really, like, let's just kind of normalize people leaving jobs that weren't a good fit and, you know, figuring something else out leaving organizations, let's normalize, like, I need to take a break from corporate, like, it's been years and I'm burnt out, but I still want to use my brain, I still want to use my expertise, like, it's okay. There's, there's, like I said, there's plenty of non-traditional ways that you can use your education, your expertise, your passions, um, and earn money, or just contribute. I mean, you know, the other part of me that isn't business related is I love volunteering and participating in, you know, key events in the community, obviously, Nashville Humane, the Belcourt Theater, you know, so I also had the opportunity to use some of my spare time for good in the in the community. And that was enriching to me that filled my soul. And another Um, aspect of your networking. Yes, a complete other aspect of my networking, because, you know, yes, 
You know, I think so many people are afraid to leave their work. I remember I gave a, a presentation on a book called Freelance Nation, and you mentioned something about there's all kinds of part-time jobs or where you can come in as a, a person just filling in for the income you need. Mm -hmm. And in Daniel, I think it's Daniel Pink's, the author, he says that that is where we're moving is mm -hmm. Freelance Nation. All of the, you mentioned that all the individuals that got corporate experience mm -hmm. now have choices that they didn't think they had because yeah. the value of the experience they got in corporate America. Yes. Yes. So you are just showing the audience, and I hope that any of you listening out the, today are, are lis listening to what Donna's saying about, yes, it's scary, and yes, mm -hmm. you have to figure out how you're going to bring in income, and yes, you have to maybe network a little or reach out, but you're going to be surprised in the transition because now Donna's got a book, and <laughs> she can still work, and you are working, right? I am full time. I am. Yes. I, I joined a great organization about three months ago, uh -huh. still in my expertise. I'm director of customer experience, which is, you know, a role I've had many times over and it's a new role. We have a new team and it's like a blank slate. So very excited to be a key contributor at an, at another organization. Let me ask you, mm -hmm. uh, this might be helpful to some of the people listening to what have you learned about yourself in, all, in taking advantage and moving forward in these hello self moments, just continuing to move forward? What have you learned about yourself personally? Yeah, there's, there's a few things. One, I'm a person outside of the role that I have in an organization, right? Mm -hmm. Many times we identify ourselves with our title or the company that we work for, and that's easy to get caught up in, but I'm actually a person <laughs> outside of that, that has a certain expertise, but my own unique personality. So I learned that um, in meeting other people outside of the organization, you know, I'm if you don't take away anything else, take away, like break out of your organization and meet other people. Yeah. There's, there's other people like you out there, right? So I've learned that I've learned that I have expertise and knowledge that people will pay for. So I fell into customer experience 30 years ago, but you know, through it all, I have experience and and knowledge that people will pay for. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm gouging people for my expertise. That just is pleasing to me to know that I can be of value to others, not just my organization that I'm working for. And the other thing that I learned is this has to, to well, it's through my, my book, actually. I, I've always been creative, but I learned that I have a special gift for creativity when it comes to children, diversity and inclusion for young children and adults. And the joy that I get when I read my books to an elementary school class or a daycare over Zoom and how they relate to this character and just cheer for this character of Lady the dog has given me rewards tenfold. Tell us um, a little bit more about Lady and how she teaches children. You know, the books are things Lady likes. And so we talk about things Lady likes and then encourage the young reader to share a little bit about what they like. So an mm -hmm. example, you know, I mean, the first is get example right off the bat when you meet Lady is she shares that she was in a shelter. And so you can say that she was adopted and she asks the reader, maybe, you know, maybe you're adopted too or know someone who's adopted. So right from the beginning, we're bringing adoption into yes. the conversation. Further along in the book, Lady shares that she likes to play with all kinds of dogs, even dogs that don't look like her. And we prompt the, the reader or the child to think about who do you, who do you know that doesn't look like you? Mm -hmm. And who do you play with? And so very subtly through things that Lady likes, we're talking about diversity. We're talking about adoption. We're, you know, we're just talking about fairness right. and it's subtle, but we have to start somewhere. 
And, and it's so important that yeah. children, and they can relate to a dog. It's not threatening right. or anything. It's their right. pet. Most of them have right. pets. Right. So I think it is a dynamic way. And our children need that centering that, that you, I think what you brought out about we're just all human beings yeah. and it doesn't matter if we're a dog, a bulldog or we're a, 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 a poodle or, yeah, or whatever. <laughs> right. Uh, we have fun playing together. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of uh, those lessons in life are so, you know, Donna and my audience, you see this woman in front of you. She knows how to integrate professional experience and a professional life with the real things that happen in life and she has a, a bigger concept than she said this than just a title or the company I work for I was just called yesterday by a client who said to me um, I want and it was a female client she said I want to be more than just a business she's got her own business by the way and mm -hmm. I want to be more than a business and I'm I want to do that with some graphics how can I do that so we had to talk about what her purpose was what I love about you in writing this book you had a purpose that was bigger than just writing a book about mm -hmm. a dog mm -hmm. So yes. critical. And that's the thing that we talk about. And I think all of us listening here today have a purpose. If you don't, just make it up. That's what I always tell as a coach. Start someplace. Just make it up. Yeah. Don't and I mean, we didn't know years ago that she was going to write this book. Of exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And your purpose is just that. It's your purpose. Exactly. It, and it, can it doesn't change. resonate with anybody or everybody. Yes. That's okay. If that's what's driving you, if that's what's important to you, that's fine. Yes. And I, I think it can change too. Just oh, like, yeah. you know, it was to get a job. And, mm -hmm. and I like something that Donna also mentioned that I try to say to all my clients is don't just go get a job. Now, if you need the income, go get a job. But think through, like Donna said, where, where am I really good? I'm great in customer experience. Mm -hmm. I'm great in building those relationships. I'm great in reaching out. So find your talent and then you'll know when it's time to move or you'll know. But yes, I, I mean, sometimes we have to make the money. Donna said that. Yeah. But these are the kind of things to, that I think are really critical in waking up and deciding not to just get another job. If it is, just say it's temporary. <laughs> it, it's it's temporary. And listen, like if we could do real talk for a second, you know, I mentioned I was on Upwork yes. and I got a gig to temporary gig for two weeks to design customer service training. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. I've done it a million times. Guess what? I also got some gigs to do some data entry. I also got some gigs to make some phone screening calls for a company that was hiring. Like it, it didn't, it didn't matter. Right. It didn't matter because my purpose was leaving where I was because it was not yes. working for me, understanding what it was I was looking for and being patient and taking the time to find it. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, have ways to pay bills along the way. And then, my creativity was sparked and, you know, I also, you know, I did the books as we discussed, but, you know, it's not, I guess real talk is, you know, if you have to take some gigs you think are, are beneath you or you feel like, you know, you shouldn't have to, it's okay to do it in, in that meantime, you know, there's that in the meantime where you have to do whatever. Patricia, you remember years ago after I was downsized and we first met, I worked at Pier 1 Imports. Yes. Oh, yeah. For like a year or two. And you know what? I loved it. I'm in customer service. So I loved it. Um, were there times when I thought, wow, I used to be a leader in an organization and I'm a college graduate and, you know, now I'm working at Pier One? Sure. But you know what? It was in the meantime. Yes. And I met more friends, yes. met more people and, you know, moved on. So 
there's there's no shame in that. Like I, I think Donna's bringing up another great point. We don't even know who we are because when you're willing to do those kind of things and you have fun doing it, oh yeah, you think about, ooh, I can't believe I got a master's degree and I'm doing this. <laughs> but you think about those things, but then you get back to what is it I like about this? And it's really yeah. the core of, I'm just looking at a book right now that's laying here on my desk and it's shaken by Tim Tebow. <clears throat> I haven't read it yet, but I like the subtitle he's got, Discovering Your True Identity in the Midst of Life's Storms. Yep. So much of what exactly. we're Who are we? Are we that title? Are we yeah. too good because we've got this kind of degree? Or yeah. can we learn from this? Can I take this time to discover? Oh, Donna, what would you suggest to anyone listening today who's standing on, this is a question I had, standing on okay. the edge of something that they want to do and they can't get the courage? What would you say to them? Well, I mean, first is go for it. You know, that's, that's you know, kind of short and obvious, but like, oh, no. Go for it. And, you know, I'm going to relate it back to when I started my business. After the downsizing, I agonized over my website. And finally, one day, like somebody just hit me over the head and is like, just hit the publish button. It's not like it's going to it's going to be on the news and a million people are going to like go click on it like immediately. And I was like, oh yeah, I could hit publish. No one's going to know it's out there. Like, okay. And so I feel like building up the courage or whatever, like whatever it is, just do it. Because like, again, you're not going to send out a press release, right? Like no one's going to know really like, you know, so just kind of get out of your head yes. and just hit that publish button. Just, yes. just do just it. Do it, Donna yeah. says, just yeah. do it. I love that because <laughs> it seems so simple and yet it's so profound that mm-hmm. all we have to do is just step out and we're yeah. so afraid to step to take that next step. It's not the end of the world. It's just the next step. If it doesn't, <laughs> if it doesn't do exactly what you want, I've been there with creating this podcast. Mm-hmm. It took me forever to step out and say, I'm just <laughs> going to do it. I don't care. I'm just going to try it. <laughs> you mentioned something about a uh, website too. I want to mm-hmm. make sure before we hang up that is there any one last statement you want to leave and then get your website, your book, tell me, a, you know, share with them how they can reach that and anything you want to share about how they could reach you. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, I did this presentation a couple of months ago and and, the, and I believe this and the, the tagline was, you know, when you can bet on anything, always bet on yourself. Mm-hmm. And I believe that I have lived it. You can do it you, you can do it Mm -hmm. for my books. We don't, we don't have a website, (laughs) but they are on Amazon. They're called things lady likes. There's one volume and then there's a holiday edition and you can find her on Instagram at things lady likes book, where you can follow all of her antics. When we read to kids, we do free book Friday. There's, there's just a bunch of stuff that we do. But if you are interested in following along and I'll pitch here, if you happen to be an educator or no educators or want to have us read to your classroom or your organization, hit me up. We're happy to. Yes. Fantastic. And you know, Donna said that about her book, I think if you're getting a gift for a child or anything like that, just go get that. You'll go to the store and you'll pick up something that a little gadget or something, go get a book, go get a book and start reading to the children or let them read and help them to learn about how to live in this society that we're in today. It's a transitioning society and it is not easy for our little ones. So bring Donna into your school. Bring Donna into an organization that you have that's for children, whatever. Give her an opportunity to help change the lives of your children. And she has lived it. So it's (laughs) not just about a philosophy. Donna, I cannot tell you how excited. It's just like we haven't been apart for a while. I know. (laughs) So thank you so much for 
talking to the people who may be listening today and saying, how do I, how do I get started? Donna says, just do it. Just do it. <laughs> Go ahead. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't work out and look pretty tomorrow. So just do it. So thank you so much for being here. And I'd also like to say to my podcasters, thank you for checking in to Hello Self Podcast and let us help you take your next step in your life and career. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining Hello Self today and may it offer insights and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.